Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful Empowered Harmonizers. And we're zooming in and diving in a little bit more in depth in terms of understanding the issues with someone who is covert narcissistic. Someone who has a lack of empathy and a pathological sense of self-importance. And then this creates and establishes really kind of a disregard or an ignoring turning a blind eye, a numb cheek, a deaf ear to the needs of others. And this is really in the covert narcissist lack of empathy and then how this looks, how this plays out in a relationship. <clears throat> and particularly uh, most wounding is that of underreacting, not really having an empathy, an empathetic connection. Oh, and real quick, before we get started, I wanna give a huge shout out to those who have recently donated to the channel. Thank you so much for your contributions, helping to keep the channel alive. It's an inspiration to me when you donate and your kind words. So thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. And also please, um, viewers who, if this has been a positive re resource, please do feel free to participate and donate to the channel. There is a PayPal Donate Now button there on the homepage at the Peace and Harmony channel here on YouTube. So thank you so much. And so we're diving in a little bit more in depth in terms of understanding the covert narcissist, the lack of empathy, how it plays out, how it manifests, what it looks like in a relationship. And to help you get some foundation, some footwork, some grounding so you can better understand and know what's going on so you can understand the void that has been created in this relationship. Most profoundly, this can become most painful if this is during your formative years or this is the person who you are married to. It's one thing if this person is in your workplace, you know, it doesn't have as deleterious or negative effect as when you are in a family relationship or a close relationship with a covert narcissist. And your heart is in a trauma bond with this person who has a tendency to underreact to your emotions, your feelings, your illness, your, um, your accomplishments. Um, they're not really able to be there for you and give credit where credit is due. But furthermore, they sort of black other people off. This is another sort of offshoot or problem. And we do see this also in people who are borderline is they have, you know, a very sort of deep wound. And so they have a difficult time uh, receiving empathy, especially from people who they are fearful of abandoning them. So they're very shy, timid, and oftentimes, uh, you know, hurtful to people who they are afraid will abandon them. So this profound fear of abandonment then oftentimes pushes people away, but then sort of pulls people in at the same time. So it's a very, very painful push and pull dynamic. And with a covert narcissist, um, the issue with, again, the underreacting is an invalidation or a ne and then a negative validation of you. In other words, sort of not responding or rewarding. You know, replies are like an award in a relationship. So when someone goes, oh, my God, that's so great. You got the job. You know, you feel a sort of dopamine rush. You feel a sort of reward when someone gives you like oh, that's awesome, your first place. You know, you feel good about it for yourself. And one thing in life, you know, your accomplishments should not be based on those external, um, you know, acknowledgements. You can have them, but don't be based on them because that means your happiness is tied to these external sort of uh, accolades and things, which sometimes you get, sometimes you don't. And so you can't, if your happiness is too tied up in that, you're going to have a roller coaster of happiness and unhappiness in life. Anyway, um, getting back to the covert narcissist, the lack of validation, the lack of sort of being able to hear about you, it can become, and if it's not there, it's going to create a void in your life. And you don't know how to then respond or move your life or the relationship forward because of this lack of empathy. They're not able to sort of validate who you are, so the who you are becomes pushed down, put, brushed aside, annihilated, or extinguished, to use a lot of psychology terms here for you. Yes, I have done a lot of study in psychology, hence this channel, and hence the book that I'm reading on, and the tools. So I am here to be a resource to help people become the best that they can be, especially those people who have been through their life running amok 
and being lost to these very painful covert narcissist relationships. So it is to understand, um, furthermore, that this lack of validation of who you are and your needs, it creates a lack of reward, a lack of feel good, and a lack of personal growth. You will find that because if you're involved with um, a relationship with someone who is narcissistic and it all becomes about them, that's the only way you're oftentimes able to survive if this was a, fam a, fam a family member or a spouse, you eventually begin going down that path. It's the only, you are on survive mechanisms. You are on the fight or flight. You're on the trauma bond. You become fearful that this person will lose you, so you become more adept, better, more talented at taking care of their needs in isolating or numbing down your own. And so this becomes what, we, what is known in psychology as codependency or Dr. Craig Malkin I love his term echoist. You be, your life becomes an echo of them. But I love the term because it means you have to empty yourself out, numb yourself out, martyr yourself out, become a scapegoat, you know, take the hits, take the pain, take one for the team time and time again, and then you're on survival mode. And then eventually it becomes a rock bottom where you either become unemployed, you become unhappy, um, you, 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 don't, you feel empty inside, you can't carry on. Your talents aren't embraced. In other words, you're only embraced for what you can give them. You're not embraced for who you are. They're not able to say, oh, tell me about your day, or tell me about what you would love to do, or you know, give you the back scratch, give you, you know, the foot massage, give you the strokes of your ego. In other words, you become egoless. You be, <clears throat> they're not able to say good job so you're not able to what is known in psychology as reinforce your behavior if you don't re reinforce the behavior it becomes extinguished or even what's worse is then the narcissist you you know you be, it enables you to keep it down keep you in the dark um, then the other things you know they're getting their their needs met and then they're enabling you to stay stuck trauma bonded and then the self-limiting beliefs so then you're sort of always doing their dirty work you're always sort of their you know their supply you're like a um like a groupie to a musician you know it's not about the music it's always about them in other words it's never about you you're just the groupie they're the rock star so it becomes a really sort of bad place to be in life and so some people just allow this to go on and say this is what it is some people say you know this is enough um, this really is getting bad and so it's realizing that because of this under reacting to your needs you need to then reignite get re-familiarized get reattached re-embrace and really literally embrace yourself your needs writing them down speaking them out into existence <clears throat> and not needing this covert narcissist to hear or validate them so oftentimes that is very difficult because it's difficult to pull away because you've been this to this person, they're not being it to you in return, they will not change. So it's very interesting and very fascinating once you accept this truth. The truth will set you free, you own your truth. Every person owns their truth. Even if you've been around people who want you to perpetuate the lie, perpetuate the dysfunction, you've oiled the machine of dysfunction too many times, no more you're no longer oiling the cog in their machine <clears throat> you're pulling out the oil is now for you you are now oiling up your inner i am separate and distinct from and then your feelings are no longer tied to those events which have created your negative experience you're literally uh, you're literally raising your awareness you're literally saying no in five to fifteen words i am out of here you know i am done you know, Elvis is leaving the building. You don't need to give it to them. You need to give the pronouncement and the declaration to yourself. You need to communicate with yourself now. It is all about self-communication. Self-communication will then set you on the right path, positive orderly direction, thinking, feeling, behaving, and becoming. It'll help you to manifest all the good and abundance that you desire and deserve in your life, including all the love, the puppies, the flowers, the butterflies, the kisses, the food, the vacations, the job, the smiles, the movies, um, the trips, 
whatever it is that is where you are headed so it is it is very important to accept the bounty of your of your own liberation so only you can liberate this if it's been a chain if it's bounded you and you say well I don't know where to go I'm gonna go from here you're moving forward that's where you're going you're moving forward and up you're going this direction if you could draw a graph you're going this way and literally when you say up you are going to be feeling up you know you're feeling you know higher energy you are you know and then seeking to be around and surrounding yourself with environments peoples and situations which can then give to you and help you to neutrify a stronger I am not the critical ones you are you are inextricably not seeking approval from people who seek to criticize you if if they are of that ilk of people who want to be opinionated say you're this say you're that adios sayonara whatever language you want to say it in you are not in their inner circle you are not part of them you are not embracing them you then go on and make decisions even to be alone is a better choice than to be around these people <clears throat> so you need to embrace your aloneness you need to embrace your I am you need to embrace your independence first and even if that feels a lot of people trust me I've known a lot of people who they never want to be alone they are terrified of being alone they've been married um, they want a, a boyfriend a girlfriend um, they always want to have a somebody there they are not comfortable it could be the stigma they feel lonely um, they don't want to be single um, everybody else is this who cares it does not matter you are independent you are liberated and you are free and you know you don't need to be on the repound where then you're trying to seek a refill of the person that you just left um, oftentimes after people have exposed someone or they've realized that this relationship ain't given me what I need you know they are afraid of being alone so then they seek to go out and date right away let me get my mind off of this let me start dating you know you're just keeping the trauma bond stuck because you're in a reactive state you haven't worked through the fact that you what happened here so the inner work must be done oh peace and harmony I'm used to going to barbecues I'm used to going to trips I'm used to going to these family things okay that was then this is now the now is where the personal power is now is the time to start new traditions new experiences new settings from the ground up you're setting a new foundation like we discussed in the previous um, video it's like having a new square you know acreage of land which is fertile it has um, you know all the nutrients all the nitrogen all the carbon a rich soil that you can then do and set a positive sunny space for yourself in your life and so this needs to be created by you know on your own by yourself and you need to find what that light means for you and how it feels for you what it looks like what it sounds like what it tastes like and to feel good about self <clears throat> and that you know and that you don't need to feel guilty that you're separating feel bad the stigma the label that is all the ego that is the judgment that is meaningless it is to say I am liberated I am free I am joyful I am blissful I deserve happiness I deserve safety I deserve peace I deserve harmony I deserve happiness I deserve to relax I deserve to just be able to exist and I, I deserve to be authentic and not to live a false life where I'm living to please others living to you know get others approval that is not where the good life is that is not where the juice is the meat is whatever it is you want to call it you know you have to butter your own bread in other words stop buttering the bread of others and butter your own fill your own cup first don't worry about filling others cup that is oftentimes the change of behavior that you need to do and say amen to that I'm getting the book I'm taking the class I'm riding the bike I'm going on the hike I'm eating the new burrito at the new place I'm no longer eating the junk food I'm no longer eating that emotional stuff down I'm getting back to <clears throat> me I'm doing me today I'm not doing everybody else and that is so important because you're now giving empathy to yourself that's what the recovery journal is all about it's about creating a connection and having a healthy bond and attachment with yourself 
for people who have just started the journey, this might sound very odd. I don't think this can happen. It takes time. This, to get good, it might take years, but do it you must, consistently you must, and working the tools you must, applying them. All the tools that I discuss here on the channel, they all work together. You get your life from all angles. You clear your energy space on all angles. You know, the energetic field around you is powerful. These people might like, you know, once they see that you're changing, they'll be able to see it and sense it. There is no going back. There is no backward momentum. You are embracing the divine. You're embracing the I am. The divine, which is more intelligent than these people. You know, there's other divine intelligence which runs the show, which is there to uplift you, support you, send you the signs, help you to put the foot down, squash the evil you know, web and get you out of the web. You are no longer in the matrix. You are no longer getting bit by these people. You don't need to acquiesce or be as if, you know, getting the phone, getting the car, getting the fingernails, whatever it is that you had to, felt that you had to do. You don't need to burden yourself. You can release that. And oftentimes giving yourself the validation, the empathy that you need and doing it through your astralmations, repeating your affirmations, saying them out loud. So verbally, they're resonating through your entire body and your physiology is moving. You'll find that your subconscious then begins to provide you the solutions that you need. The an they say the answers are within. You'll have a magical, wonderful experience once you begin to liberate this awareness and the solutions will come and you'll be able to live in the solution and the solutions are for you it's not always only to help others it's to liberate you and now that i am liberated i'm really going to become now that i'm liberated i'm really going to have now that i'm liberated i'm really